In this video today, I'm going to explain exactly how you can master ARCHICAD wall types and compositions. I'm going to run you from a basic noob to an absolute expert in hopefully under 10 minutes, maybe 15. Let's see how we go. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, firstly, thank you so much for joining me. On this channel, we talk all things architecture and technology. If that interests you, smash that subscribe button down below for a brand new video every single Monday. Now, today we're talking about ARCHICAD wall types, wall compositions, and everything you need to know how to create the perfect wall system. I'm not gonna hold you for too long on this screen. Let's turn around and get started with today's tutorial. So we started with the ARCHICAD template open in front of us here today, and it doesn't matter what template you're using. At the moment, I'm working on creating my very own ARCHICAD template for you guys to be able to download so this is just all part of the process. Basically, if you're new to ARCAD, what we're gonna be talking about today is the wall tool. So over here on the left-hand side panel, the very first icon up the top is gonna to be the wall tool. If we click on the wall tool and then select our settings dialog box up the top, it's gonna to open up all of the settings for our walls. Now, looking at this dialog box, there's an overwhelming amount of information, but let's break it down. Here at the front, we have our home story where that wall is basically gonna start. If we wanna increase the height of that wall, we can use it here. So say zero is our ground floor. We wanna make sure that wall floats 300 millimeters for whatever reason, we type in 300. In this instance, we don't need that. Simply back to zero is absolutely fine. Now, at the same time, this is linked to the first floor ceiling. So if we were to adjust our ceiling heights automatically, this would update automatically as well. That's something I prefer to use, but if you don't like to and you wanna adjust all of your wall heights individually, you can simply change that to not linked and you have full control over your wall heights. On the right hand side at the top, we have our three different type of wall composites. Basically, we have a basic construction type, which can be anything that is set up in our original boxes or we can have a composition. That composition is what I'm gonna be walking you through today, creating new compositions, analyzing and changing all the hatches and the details in that. In the default, you have a series of walls and wall types created automatically for you. So for example, we could have a 190 millimeter block external wall, or we could use something as generic as a 70 meter stud partition wall. No matter what you choose, it's gonna automatically update and give you the overall width of that wall as well, including the fiber sheet cement on that side there. So that wall, even though it's 190 millimeters of block work, it's 222 millimeters overall in total. This section down here is basically gonna tell us what elements we can use that for. So for instance, this generic roof slash wall slab can be used as a wall, a slab, a roof, or a shell, whereas most of the wall types created by default in ARCAD are just walls. Now we have additional settings down below here which basically allow us to manipulate that wall further. Very simple, very self-explanatory. If you hover over them, it's gonna tell you exactly what they do. The reference line down below depends how you wish to use and how you wish to set up ARCHICAD. It will always dimension from the core itself and it won't dimension the actual plasterboard or the finish if you set it up that way. So it's important that you use your reference line according to how you work. For me personally, I have it on the outside face because if for any reason that wall type grows, it means the room inside shrinks. Now for me personally, that is very useful because if you already have a development approval from the local authorities, it means that you don't need to go back and reapply because a wall has moved and the perimeter boundaries have changed. Instead, you're just decreasing the internal space and it's not a big problem from a regulation point of view. So you can make that conscious decision to move forward or not. Down below, we have some additional settings basically of how it is represented on the ground floor plan. And these aren't really too important at the very start. Everything is set up as it needs to be. You don't need to worry about them at all. But to run through them, show all stories, floor plan display, what kind of style, projections, and the colors of the line weights. We also have the full ability change and overwrite the surfaces. So the outside edge and inside faces can be completely overwritten to whatever material we want they won't automatically be translated to the 190 millimeter block work wall. So that's basically everything we need to understand in the wall settings panel. And if we click OK and click once, hold shift and click again, and then click a final time to finalize our wall, you'll see that we've created our very first wall. The marquee tool, selecting that wall, right clicking, show in marquee, we can see that we've created a 3D version of that exact wall. 
Now, just like you saw in that sectional detail at the front, there's your 190 mil block work and there's your fiber cement sheet on the outside. It does mean that if we click on that wall and go up to our toolbar up the top, and as an instance, let's change it to a 90 mil block work, it automatically changes. And as I mentioned, that outside leaf, that blue line being our reference line, means that regardless of what I do, that wall is only gonna grow inwards, it's not gonna grow outwards at all. Now to continue editing this wall and to have a little bit more freedom, let's say we wanna create our own wall type. So if we would wanted to create our own wall type, what you need to do is come up to window, you need to come down to toolbars, and then you need to go to attributes. Activating attributes will activate this brand new palette, which allows us to manipulate line types, hatches, fills, and wall compositions. Now, you need to know a lot of these elements to create one new wall, so I'm gonna walk you through them step by step. Now, if you're in the architecture industry, drafting, documenting, or doing anything architectural, you're definitely gonna to wanna to check out the first link in the description below. Basically, it is a series of digital products and digital downloads that's gonna allow you to elevate your architecture to the next level. As an example, if you are documenting and need a construction checklist, to make sure you don't miss anything from the most basic rookie errors to the most expert details that builders are going to ask you on site, that construction checklist is down below as well. First of all, we have our lines and if we click on our line type, you're going to see a brand new dialog box open again. We basically have a series of lines automatically created for us and for most walls, we don't really have to worry about it. We just go solid line or we can start replicating new lines in here. This isn't something that we're gonna need for a wall type, so I'm simply gonna press cancel. Next to the line types, we have our fills. The fills is basically gonna allow us to control what that wall type looks on the floor plan. So the brickwork will have a 45 degree hatch. The timber stud will have, again, a timber stud hatch. And everything is gonna be representative based on what we're using. So as you can see, we have a number of different styles here. So if I was to go to masonry block as an example, you would see that the on-screen pattern is that 45 degree line. The pattern size is 1.8 by 1.8 and rotate at 45 degrees. We can simply change that by going new and let's call that custom brick just for the time being. I can change this on-screen pattern by pressing and holding removing all of those on-screen lines. Let's say for some weird reason, we just want a flat brick. Not possible, not practical, but that's okay. And we can change our rotation to zero. That automatically changes our custom brickwork wall. Now again, that fill type is completely wrong, not an industry standard, not at all used in practice globally at all, but that is a very simple way that you can change an on-screen pattern. I do recommend looking for something similar when trying to recreate something because it's a lot simpler to create something that is very similar than to start from scratch. Next we have our building materials dialog box which is again very critical to this entire project. Along the left hand panel you're going to see all sorts of different building materials from plasterboard to insulation to masonry brick and everything in between. Now in ARCHICAD, it is automatically set up with the default internationally recognized hatch for each of them. So this is something that you really want to stick to. As an example, brickwork has a double line hatch, whereas a brick finish, so a face brick, will have that continuous 45 degree at even spacing. Now each of these are critically important in the next step and we can go ahead and change these out, manipulate them, adjust them as we see fit. So if we wanted all of our walls as an instance that were originally brick walls that had red brick to all of a sudden have a herringbone pattern, we can simply change them in this setting and it will change the entire project rather than individually one by one. Last but not least in this section is the intersection priority. If you ever have the issue where two walls aren't aligning because they're two different material types, they're two different compositions, it's most likely going to be your intersection priority. If it's too strong, it's gonna intersect and override everything. If it's too weak, it's basically never gonna connect those walls no matter how hard you try. So your intersection priority is very critical and very important depending on what kind of surface and what kind of material you're using. So as an example, structural concrete is always gonna be far superior to brickwork. So your brick is always gonna sit on top. It's never gonna actually combine with that structural concrete. So therefore, it has a stronger intersection priority. Now all of that now comes into play when we come into our wall compositions tab. 
This basically lets us create a brand new wall and it's super, super simple. Even though all of that may have been extremely complicated, to create a new wall can be basically done in a matter of seconds. So as an example, let's go brand new brick wall. We're gonna call that 240 millimeter block work wall with fiber sheet cement, let's say both sides just so we can actually show a little bit more. Pressing OK, it's gonna duplicate that wall like for like. What we're gonna see is we're gonna have a cement finish, the fiber cement sheeting on the outside, which is 10 millimeters. We're gonna have our air or space frame in the middle, which is 22 millimeters. And then we're gonna have our 190 millimeter block work here. I've said that we have a 240 millimeter block work. I don't need the air cavity in the middle because it's gonna be a direct fix to that brick wall. And then I wanna duplicate this fiber cement sheet. So let's go insert skin, click on that one and drag that below. And as you can see over here on the right hand side, that depicts what it's gonna look like in the floor plan and the surfaces. So all of a sudden we have two fiber cement sheets, a 250 mil block work, uh, sorry, 240 millimeter block work in the middle and an overall size of 260. Like previously discussed, it can be used only with the wall, but if we wanted to use this specific composite, for a slab, for example, we could create a slab that had tiles on top and plasterboard underneath. That's something we can get into in another video. We could easily do the same information on this section here. Now, if I was to click OK, click on this wall and change that to my magical brand new 240 millimeter block work external wall, fiber cement both sides, it'll automatically change to our block work wall, plasterboard, plasterboard. Now, continuing on with that trend and utilizing our brand new toolbars, if I was to click on this wall, go back to my building materials, find the brickwork that we're using in the middle, which is concrete block structural automatically highlighted for us when we're selecting the wall. And then as an example, change that to herringbone pattern and click OK. The internal leaf of that will change completely for every single wall type. And very similar, if we were to do the same thing, go back into it, change our brick structure to just concrete 23 again, it'll change back to that block work system. That's the case if you wanna change all of the walls at once. If you simply just wanna change one of the leaves, for example, you can come into override surfaces, pick whatever color you want. Let's pick a random green color, press okay, and our wall is now green. But that actual wall type itself, it, if I was to create a new one, so wall 1240, anything unchanged, double click, it remains identical until I decide to change those parameters myself and click into it. And that's basically everything that is to know about walls, wall compositions and wall types in Archicad. From a structural point of view, it is very simple, very, very user friendly. To understand if we click both those walls press ctrl i they will intersect together a lot of people keep asking how does that work up the top there's this little intersect toolbar so if that ctrl i doesn't work for you that's exactly where you're going to find it anyway that is all for me today guys thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you smash that like button for the youtube algorithm and hit the subscribe button if you want to see a new video every single week but like I said, that is all from me, so I'll see you next Monday.